Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, you'll be learning about gamma risk, which is a very, very important concept in options trading because not knowing or misunderstanding what this concept is can be both very dangerous and costly. And gamma risk is applicable to both buying options and selling options, but especially if you are selling options like myself, then like I said, gamma risk can be very dangerous, in particular, if you are trading these options very close to the expiration date. And if this stuff sounds interesting to you, then please do me a favor and hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Now quickly before we get started here, as always, if you would like to take some in-depth classes on options, options trading, and stock market investing, then check out my courses on Skillshare. I've been teaching on that platform for well over a year at this point, and in case you aren't aware, Skillshare is a lot like YouTube, except the content on that platform is geared solely towards the purpose of education in the form of online classes. And in my courses, you will see a lot of the detailed research and analysis that I have done using real stock market data with spreadsheets, graphs, and even computer programs that I have written to help simulate and prove the concepts that I am teaching. And I've dropped some links to some of the more introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. Now you will need a premium membership with the Skillshare platform if you do want to watch my courses, but if you do sign up for that membership using the links provided in the description of this video, you'll get an absolutely free two-week trial. And during that time, you can watch all my courses on Skillshare absolutely for free. And once your trial is over, it will only cost you a few dollars a month to maintain your membership and you'll gain access to all the future courses that I have planned going forward in addition to all the other classes that are on Skillshare too. And if you decide it's not for you, no worries, you can cancel before your trial is over and you won't lose a dime. But again, if you are interested, then check out those links below and join the thousands of other students that have already taken my classes. And so with that being said, we're going to jump over to my trading platform now and we'll get things started. Okay, welcome to my trading platform here. And once again, I have a chart already pulled up. And this time we'll be looking at a one-year price action chart of SPY, right? This is just an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. And so speaking first to what conceptually gamma risk actually is, gamma risk simply describes the sensitivity of option prices as the expiration date gets closer and closer. And specifically, as the expiration date does get closer, as the price of the stock, or in this case the ETF, moves around, that is going to cause the prices on the options that are expiring very soon to fluctuate a lot more wildly, or with much greater sensitivity or magnitude. Whereas instead with options that still have a lot of time left to go until the expiration date, the prices of those options are not going to fluctuate nearly as much as the price of SPY in this case also moves around. And this sensitivity in option prices can actually be quantified, and you can very easily look it up in your trading platform. So for example, let's come over to the trade tab now and take a look at the option chain for SPY. And let's take a look first at the options expiring on April 16th, 2021. And you can see right here, these options expire in 36 days. So still well over a month before these options actually expire. So let me unfold this tab right here. And I'll scroll down a bit until we get to the at the money options right here. So as of yesterday, the closing price for SPY was $389.58, but pre-market right now, it is trading a bit higher at right around $392 per share. And on the left-hand side here, these are all the call options that expire on April 16th. And on the right-hand side, these are all the put options. And then down the middle, of course, these are all the different strike prices. And so if right now, pre-market, SPY is trading just a bit over $392, that means the call option with the 392 strike right here, this is basically the at the money option. And gamma risk is particularly dangerous for at the money options. Options that basically have either a very good chance of being useful by the expiration date or useless. For these at the money options, it's basically a 50-50 shot whether by the expiration date SPY will be actually trading above their strike prices. So like I said, gamma risk is particularly dangerous and will affect the prices of at the money options the most. Now going back to when I said that gamma risk can actually be quantified, you can see for this one call option right here, the 392 strike call option, there are quite a few numbers and metrics here that we can look at. And specifically I want to direct your attention to the delta column and also the gamma column. And as I'm sure you can tell by the name, this is where the actual gamma risk comes from. Now in this video, I won't go too in depth into what delta is or what gamma is or theta and vega 
These are basically called the option Greeks. And if you want to see a deep dive into each one of these and see how they work, I do have a YouTube video explaining just that, and I'll post a card above linking to that one so you can watch it later. But in a nutshell, Delta will just tell you how much the price of this option will change for a $1 move in SPY. So as of right now, looking at the bid and ask prices for this particular call option, the fair price for this option going basically right in between these two prices is right around 730 bucks. And in case you're wondering why these numbers are quoted as basically 7.27 or $7.27 and $7.32 is because all these numbers here are quoted on a per share basis. But because these option contracts are tied to 100 shares per contract, then you just multiply these numbers by 100. So that's how I got these 730 bucks or so that you could trade this option for. And so with the delta being 0.5, or again, multiplying by 100, with the delta being 50, that means if SPY moves either up or down by $1, then just based on that directional move of SPY, you would expect the price of this option to change by about 50 bucks. And so because this is a call option, and call options become more valuable as the price of the underlying asset, in this case SPY, increases in price, that would mean if SPY goes up in price by $1, then the price of this call option would also increase by about 50 bucks. And then conversely, if SPY falls by a dollar, you would expect the price of this option to fall by about 50 bucks. And again, that is only based on that directional move. There are other things that do affect the prices of options, like implied volatility, the time until expiration, interest rates, and things like that. But just looking at a directional move of the underlying asset, Delta will tell you how much the price of this option will change because of that. And so now Gamma, Gamma will tell you how much Delta will move for a $1 price change in SPY. So for example, let's say SPY increases in price by $1. That means you would expect the price of this call option to increase by about $50. And when that happens, Delta is going to increase by two. So after that $1 move higher in SPY, now Delta becomes 52. And in fact, you can see that right here for the 391 strike call option, Right back when SPY was trading around 391, the delta was 50. And then once SPY increased in price by $1 and went to 392, which is where it's at now, you can see the gamma is also just two. And so once SPY increased to 392, that's why the delta increased to 52. And so like I said, that same thing will happen to the 392 strike call option if SPY goes from 392 to 393. And the opposite is true as well. If SPY falls in price by $1, then for this call option, you would expect the price of this option to fall by about 50 bucks. And then the delta of this call option would fall to 48. 50 minus two is 48. And that's all it is. That's all delta and gamma are meant to tell you. But now the thing I want to direct your attention to is how gamma is going to change as the expiration date gets closer and closer. For these options here, still having over a month until the expiration date, that's still quite a bit of time. So the sensitivity of these prices for these options is not that great, right? With a gamma only being two, that's very small. So as SPY moves around, the delta on these options is not going to change by much. And if it's not yet clear why this stuff is dangerous, you'll see why in a minute. So bear with me. So now let's scroll up here and take a look at the options expiring in just one day. These are the March 12th, 2021 options. Let's open these up and scroll down to the at the money options once more. And let's take a look at the at the money option, right? This is also the 392 strike call option expiring in just one day now. And now take a look at the gamma on this option. It is now 12, not two. The delta is still basically 50. And that's because for the most part, all at the money options will have a delta of around 50. But like I said, the gamma for this option expiring much sooner is much higher. It's over five times greater than for the call option expiring in April. So now what this means is, once again, if SPY increases in price by $1, for example, the price of this option is going to increase by about 50. And then when that happens, the delta of this option is not going to increase by only just two, it's going to increase by 12. So once SPY goes to 393, the delta of this option is now going to be around 62, not 52. And so again, that means if SPY increases by an additional dollar, that means the price of this option would increase by another 
not 52, like for the April options. So I hope that by now you can start to see that for these options expiring very soon, their prices are going to fluctuate a lot more quickly because the gamma for these options is much higher, which therefore has a much greater impact on delta, which as I've walked you through in a few of my examples here, is the thing that has the direct impact on the prices of these options. So gamma basically has an indirect impact on option prices. The impact it does have on option prices simply goes through the delta. And so now ultimately, why is gamma risk? Why is this thing dangerous? Well, simply speaking, it's dangerous because as the underlying stock or ETF in this case moves, even by small amounts, the prices of these options will move by huge amounts. And I know in my examples here, I've only been talking about SPY moving up or down by basically $1. And in that case, you know, with the prices of these options moving by 50 bucks or 60 bucks, that doesn't sound like a lot. But keep in mind, this is an almost $400 priced asset. And it can move as much as maybe $10 in one given day. And in fact, because for these options expiring so soon, even if SPY moved by just a few dollars, two or three dollars, looking at these call options that are currently in the money, and not by much, the delta on these options is already 100. And this is the highest a delta can get on an option. It will either always be between zero and 100. And so if you get to this point, this is when for every one dollar move of SPY, the price of this option is going to move by a full $100. So you can imagine if you, let's say, sold this call option right here. You sold this naked call option with one day to go, and you collected about 130 bucks for doing this. And let's say tomorrow SPY had a big rally and moved up by maybe $8 or $10. Well, because the gamma on these options is so high, even when SPY moves up by just a few dollars, this delta is going to accelerate all the way to 100 immediately. And then if on top of that, SPY just kept on going higher, you could lose hundreds or thousands of dollars just on this one contract, right? Because when you sell this option, you either want it to expire worthless, meaning by the expiration date, you want SPY to close below 392. And in that case, you would get to keep the full 130 bucks. Or you can also simply just buy it back for a lower price. If you sell for 130 and SPY drops a little bit, and therefore the price of this option drops maybe from 130 down to 50, well, then you could buy it back for 50 and walk away with a profit. And so that means on the flip side, if the price of this option increases, now as an option seller, you're going to be losing money. So like I was saying, if SPY has a big rally tomorrow, then the price of this option is going to explode. And if, just to give a number here, if SPY did rally by a full 10 bucks, let's say, then the price of this option could go from 130 to almost 900 real quick in just one day. And if you sold not just one of these contracts, but if you sold many call options here, then I'm sure you can imagine how many thousands and thousands of dollars you would have lost all in just one single day. Now for buying options, Gamma Risk does have the same impact, right? Whether you buy or sell this call option, Gamma and Delta are going to have the same impact on the prices of this option. But at least when you're buying options, you do have defined risk. If you bought this option for 130 bucks, the most you could lose is that amount of money. But that means, of course, if tomorrow SPY has a big sell-off and it drops significantly, then the price of this option is going to go from 130 down to just a few pennies very quickly. And therefore, you would have lost this full amount of money extremely fast. And just for comparison here, if SPY did increase in price tomorrow by a full 10 bucks, then like I showed you, the price of this option would likely go to around 900 bucks. I'm just basing that off the price of the 382 strike call option right now. So that would mean the price of this call option would increase in price by about eight fold, right? The price of this option, the 382 strike call option is about eight times greater than the 392 strike call option expiring in March tomorrow. But the April options, however, scrolling back down, the 392 strike call option expiring in April in 36 days is around 730 bucks. And now looking at the 382 strike call option that expires in April is trading for about 1,400, only two times greater than this option. So if instead you sold this option and tomorrow SPY had a huge rally and increased in price by 10 bucks, you would only be at a loss of two times the amount of money you sold this call option for, as opposed to your losses being eight times 
the amount of money you sold the call option for in the March expiration cycle of tomorrow. And same thing if you are buying these options as well. If you bought the 392 strike call option and SPY had a huge sell-off tomorrow and it dropped down by 10 bucks or so, well, looking at the 402 strike call option, the price would definitely get cut in half or a little bit more than that, but that's still much, much better than the price of this option almost going to zero, like for the options expiring tomorrow. So this is why ultimately when you are trading options, and most importantly if you are selling options, and you do have that undefined risk aspect to your trading, in my opinion, you should never ever be trading options that expire in less than three weeks. Once you hit that 21 day until expiration mark, that's when gamma risk starts to become a problem. That's when the gammas on these options here start to increase at a significant rate. And so as some final advice here before wrapping this video up, if you do want to be selling options like myself, then I would stick to selling options between 30 and 60 days left to go until expiration. Anywhere within that range is okay. And then if you are buying options, I would go further out in time and go beyond 60 days until expiration. So I hope that helps. And so that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some in-depth classes on options, options trading, and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be dropping new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.